The Pico 4 was a great VR headset. It managed to offer higher specs than the Quest 2 and still at a relatively low cost. But more importantly, it was that escape to the data monopoly that is Meta. But time has moved on and we are entering our next generation of VR devices. With the Quest 3 just around the corner, the next generation of Pico has leaked, with a detailed robot telling us all the specs of not just one upcoming headset, but three. And with specs like standalone with display port connection and 4K per eye resolution, the Pico 5 has the potential to be the greatest VR headset of all time. And so this is everything we know about the Pico 5. Going back to when the Pico was first launched, by some it was dubbed as essentially a clone of the Quest 2, and was even stated so by Meta's own Boz, and that's because the specs were nearly identical. But once it got in the hands of the people, it became obvious that in some ways the Pico was more, and in some ways it was less. The hardware was where it shined, and the software was where it lacked. But by staggering the launch after Meta's new headset, the Pico was able to establish a market as an upgraded device. And according to the leaks, that's exactly what they are planning again. But before we look at the specs, we do get a look at the controllers. And by the looks of it, they've gone the same route as Meta. It's hard to say whether they are intentionally trying to copy Meta with the ringless design, or this is just a coincidence. But by the looks of it, they are just as confident with their controller tracking as Meta are. I assume they will be using the same dotted infrared tracking as the Quest 3 controllers and just to give you an idea where the placement of these infrared lights are, a skin of one of the Quest 3 controllers shows us how many and where these lights are, just to give you an idea of how they track. But by far, the most mind-blowing news is with the Pico 5 specs. I believe Meta and Pico are almost certainly taking the same route in terms of a low, mid and high tier headsets. With the Quest Lite, the Quest 3 and the Quest Pro 2 being released over the next few years, it's easy to see where Pico are going with this. A few days ago, a document leaked of a roadmap showing us all the specs and release windows of three new headsets from Pico, all to be announced and released next year in 2024. And that's the Pico 5, the Pico Pro and the Pico Pro Max. And from what I can see, the Pro Max is in a league of its own with features I've never seen from a standalone headset. But starting with the Pico 5, this from what it seems is the entry level Pico, holding similar specs to that of the Quest 3, with the same Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chip, the same inside out tracking system, and what we mentioned earlier, similar controllers. The main differences are with the resolution, and that's 2560 by 2560 per eye compared to the Quest 3's 2208 by 2064 per eye, both using an LCD panel. The document also refers to second generation pancake lenses, and while it doesn't mention anything about field of view, I'd hope this means a slight increase as the Pico 4 had a slightly higher FOV than the Quest 2. The Pico 5 will reportedly cost the same price as the Quest 3 at just under $500 and we'll have a preview in February with a launch date of 21st of April 2024. Now based on specs alone, this could be considered an upgrade over the Quest 3, but much like the Pico 4, this would only be a slight upgrade. And at the end of the day, it's really down to preference. Some of you don't want a meta device, and that's completely understandable. The Quest 2 and Pico 4 were both great PC VR headsets, and so if you're a PC VR user, the Pico is slightly more favourable, as you're really not utilising the standalone aspect, which Meta has more funding and development in. But this brings me to the Pico 5 Pro, which in my eyes is what I ideally wanted the Quest 3 to be, and that's essentially all the features as mentioned before, with an extra camera management chip for face and eye tracking. I keep going on about the potential of foveated rendering, as it really does help make your device more capable. The Pimax Crystal, for example, has managed to nearly double the frame rate of some of the games by using their eye tracking modules. But then again, that only works if properly utilized. The Pico 4 Pro, for example, had face and eye tracking, but this is mainly a feature for more expression in games like VRChat. The Pico 5 Pro will reportedly go on sale in October 2024 at a price of $600. But where my interest lies, and for one specific reason, is the Pico 5 Pro Max. But before I get into that, I just wanna take a second to talk about today's sponsor. I edit and record most of my videos from here. And while I like the setup I have, my chair was not doing me any favors. My one-eyed cat has attacked it several times and it was painfully uncomfortable. But thankfully, Brazen Gaming Chairs hooked me up with this incredibly comfortable chair. With lumbar and neck support, it helps make these videos that much more comfortable. If you'd like to check them out, you can get 10% off using discount code VIRTUALCHAP and the link is in the description. Now, the Pro Max has an insane display of 3840 by 3840 per eye, which I must admit is where I'm starting to get skeptical, 
as this is an absolutely insane display, higher than pretty much every other VR headset. I'm currently testing the Pimax Crystal with a resolution of 2880 by 2880 per eye, and it's at that clarity you start to get diminishing returns, much like the 4K TVs of today. But even if this headset isn't a reality, the specs are something of a dream, with three chipsets, one XR2 Gen 2, another camera management chip for face and eye tracking, and another to enable direct, uncompressed display port connection to a PC. This would be the ultimate headset, but one thing to take into consideration, this is a jam-packed VR headset, and while I don't have any doubts Pico couldn't pull this off, the Pimax Crystal offers similar specs from what I can tell at the moment, and it's not a seamless experience. The Quest is a simple device and it just works. The more features you start to add, the less attention you can pay to more important aspects of a VR device. But I could be wrong, and it could be the best headset we've ever seen, or the leaks could be a fabrication of someone's wild imagination. But based on the history of leaks, they tend to be somewhat in the ballpark. And according to the report, the Pro Max will go on sale in December 2024 for a price of $1,100, which at those specs, is a bargain. But one thing I've intentionally left out, and that's a reason why none of this could matter, and you're still better off buying a Quest 3, and that's its AR capabilities. Many of you are excited by the potential of AR, and all of these Pico headsets do include a depth sensor, much like the Quest 3, and augmented reality is a selling point of the Quest 3, and it's clear from the previews this is the direction Meta want to push their new device. If history is to go by anything, then the Pico 5 will try their own version of an XR device but this is not a guarantee. And if that is the case, in that sense, regardless of specs, the Quest will have the upper hand, as the AR is the next big thing. I would be interested to know what you all think about this. Would you hold off buying the Quest 3 for the Pico? If you liked today's video, like and subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.